We're in chapters 15 to 17 of 1 Samuel. And after Saul had been reigning as king for two years, we read just a few chapters earlier that the Philistines, they had gathered together to fight against Israel. And when the men of Israel saw that they were in danger, for the people were distressed, then the people hid. Well, as for Saul, he waited, you know, seven days, the Bible tells us. And according to the time that had been set by Samuel, he was the period he was waiting. But Samuel didn't show up on time and the people were afraid, you know, and they started to leave Saul because an army is advancing. So Saul panics and he just decides to make a burnt offering to the Lord himself. And he was not supposed to do that. That was the role of the priest. But just as he finished, Samuel shows up and he says, what have you done? And Saul said, you know, he's explaining to him, well, when the people were leaving, you know, I just felt compelled to make the offering. He says, you have done foolishly. Saul was basically taking matters into his own hands out of fear. And then Samuel begins to tell him, you know, you haven't kept the Lord's commandment. You know, and from for now on, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. Well, the kingdom, it isn't taken from Saul right away, but it was decreed at that moment what would happen. And in God's timing, you know, it would be established that that was going to occur. And so then the Lord tells Saul to attack the Amalekites and to destroy everything. Um, and, but they didn't. They didn't destroy the king and all of the animals. And so we read that now the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. So when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel saying, Saul went to Carmel and indeed he set up a monument for himself. Then Samuel went to Saul and Saul said to him, blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord for the people they, they spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. And the rest, well, we've utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, be quiet. And I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, speak on. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes. There is a huge lesson for us in that statement. We need to walk in humility. Even when we're elevated in position and authority, you know, to stay small in our own eyes, which will keep us from getting puffed up with pride and not looking to God. Samuel said, were you not head of the tribes of Israel and did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord. Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? So basically they took the spoil for themselves. And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which, you know, the Lord sent me. And I brought back Agag, king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites, but the people took the plunder, the sheep, the oxen, and the best of the things, you know, which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice them to the Lord your God in Gilgal. So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Saul thinks, well, I did obey the Lord, but to partially obey is not to obey. Samuel goes on to say, Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. So we see he's sorry, right? He's apologizing. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned around to go away, Saul seized the edge of his robe and tore it. So Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today 
and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, please, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and return with me, that I may worship the Lord your God. Wow, all he was thinking about was how it was going to look to everyone else. He wasn't broken over his sin. He was so distressed that he tore Samuel's robe, but he's just begging him to come back with him and continue to honor him in front of the people. It was like someone who's sorry that they got caught, but they're really not remorseful in their hearts. They're just sorry for the consequences. They didn't want to, he didn't want to face um, how it was going to look in front of everybody else. So let's recap Saul's sin um, over these chapters. He made an unlawful sacrifice. He didn't destroy all that God had commanded him, him, which he just didn't follow what God had commanded. He set up a monument to himself. Um, he was sorry, but he was not repentant. So we see pride and concern for self-image. He was more worried about pleasing people rather than pleasing God. And then Samuel says, bring out King Agag of the Amalekites here to me. So Agag came to him cautiously and Agag said, surely the bitterness of death has passed. I'm sure he was a bit sheepish. You know, he's basically saying, can we just, can we leave the past in the past? You know, all of his people had been destroyed, but he had, you know, they had left him alive. But Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hacked Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. And Samuel went no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. There are so many lessons for us to learn from the life of Saul. And then there's also a great contrast that we're going to see between King David and King Saul. You know, David, we see, or at least we will see when we get there, um, that he sins and they're great sins, and he repents, though. And the difference between them is that David, we see, was truly repentant, and Saul was not. Saul was still only concerned with himself. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. Thank you, Jesus, for your word and for teaching us your truths. And I pray that you are blessed in your day as you ponder these things in your heart. Shalom.